If the genes aren't controlling the cell, what is controlling the cell? And this is where my research led me about in 1985 to understand the relationship that genes have with the cell. And the important part is this. In the literature, especially in mass media, these two words get confused all the time, correlation and causation. Correlation means associated with some, there's a connection between things. Genes are correlated with your body, that's a fact. Causation is the act or agency that produces an effect. Genes do not cause anything, that's the error. But the problem is this, you read an article, and this is a true story. An article that reveals, for example, that they found a gene correlated with obesity. And then, here's what was interesting about it. They went to a, a number of expected parents who were expecting a child, and they said, listen, if we would do amniocentesis and check the cells of your fetus and found that your fetus had this gene associated with obesity, what would you do? 70% of the parents said they would immediately opt for an abortion. And the relevance about that is, I never said the genes caused obesity, they're correlated with obesity. The fact is, if you read the articles, they always start out, a new gene is correlated with cancer. And then about a paragraph down the road, this gene causes cancer. This is an error. Genes do not cause anything. Genes are potential. Whether you activate the genes or not is not at the behest of the gene. So what is it that selects the genes? And the answer is, well, we start off with the, the, the first part about this is, what are the genes, what activates the genes? Because if I knew what activated the genes, then I'd be right at the edge of what's controlling the genes. I use this paper because there's a, a sentence I use straight out of the paper, so I'm not trying to pull any wool over your eyes. This paper, Metaphors in the Role of Genes in Development, explains this. Metaphors means, in this case of science, when a scientist wants to do an experiment, he creates a hypothesis. This is an idea. The experiment is to test the idea. The hypothesis is not a truth, it's just a suggestion. In 1953, when Watson and Crick found the secret of the DNA code, the hypothesis was made that genes control biology. But that was in 1953. That was 50 years ago, and the issue is this. If you keep repeating that over and over again, at some point, you forget that it was a hypothesis. At some point, it becomes a truth. And so we buy the truth that it's in major textbooks everywhere. Genes control, genes control. And the answer is, do genes control? This paper reveals in this sentence by Niehaut the truth. When a gene product is needed, a signal from its environment, not an emergent property of the gene itself, activates expression of that gene. Well, the third line, not an emergent property of the gene itself, means this. Genes are blueprints. A blueprint is not on or off. A blueprint is just data. Can, if you had a blueprint to a house, is, is there an on and off to your blueprint? No. The blueprint doesn't go on and off, but what goes on and off is who's reading the blueprint. And the point is, genes are blueprints, but they don't determine if they're going to be read or not. And when it says, where, what makes it read? And the answer is a signal from its environment. Well, let me explain exactly how genes work. This is a picture of a nucleus of a cell that's isolated. That's where all the chromosomes are. Then there's a broken nucleus from the same preparation, and you can see all the chromosomes are lined up out there. And you can see, for example, the two red ones. And the point about it is this. You get two sets of chromosomes, one from your mother that comes with the egg, and one set of chromosomes from your father that comes with the sperm. So you actually have two complete sets of programs to make a human being in every cell in your body. And the issue about why I'm showing you this slide is because it's new interesting technique for staining the chromosomes. And the fact is, what am I staining? Well, the belief system is the nucleus contains the DNA, which it does. But here's the point. I'm not staining DNA. I'm staining protein. 50% of the nucleus is protein. But we don't talk about the protein, why not? Because we're so focused on the DNA, when they do the experiments, what do they do? They break open the nucleus like this, they isolate the chromosomes, then they throw away the proteins and study the pure DNA. But the truth is, there is no such thing as pure DNA in a human system. What does it look like in the system? And the answer looks like this. What are the proteins actually looking like? And, and right here, what you can see is this. The proteins are covering the outside of the DNA like a sleeve. These proteins are given a name of regulatory proteins, a great name because that's their function. How do they work? And it's so simple, it works like this. Imagine my arm as DNA. Well, let's imagine my bare arm as DNA. 
and I write a genetic code. Let's say I write the code for blue eyes on my arm, the genes that make the, the code for blue eyes. And I say, OK, what does this DNA look like when I put it back in the nucleus? And the answer is it looks like this. Can you read the genes or not? What do you have to do to read the genes? Say it. Take the sleeve off. Then you can read the gene, because the code is written on the arm. So what's the sleeve? The sleeve is the protein.